Good evening. I hope uh, everyone is doing as well as we can do in these strange circumstances. Um, I thought it'd be good to reach out again and have a chat. I hope you're enjoying the Karma community, our new electronic communication with everyone, whether you be members or friends or members of staff or, or part of our broad family. And uh, I'd like to thank you very much for the comments after my last couple of um, um, conversations with you. And I think it's been a very positive experience. I want to thank you for the suggestions and some questions. And I'd very much like to do it every single week. It's, it's an opportunity for me to talk about what I feel we as a company are doing and for you to possibly get some feedback from the, the horse's mouth, so to speak. So I'm, I'm here in England and uh, we've just gone four weeks for our lockdown. It was the four weeks today that uh, I last had a, pub in the, uh, a drink in the pub <laughs> down the road. And um, as you probably know, we, the government has given us another three weeks at least of lockdown. I think we probably think it's going to go a bit longer than that. And uh, pretty much all of us around the world are in the, in the same boat, being in lockdown to try and control this coronavirus. And I don't know about you, but I feel a bit like that movie Groundhog Day, that every day seems to repeat itself. My, my schedule is I get up at about 5.45, just before 6 in the morning. I spend from 6 to about 11 dealing with, with business, talking to my colleagues in, in Bali and India and uh, Singapore and Australia, who are also in their own lockdown, about running the company and, and making decisions, um, looking after the interests of our owners and looking after our resorts. And then at about 11, I, 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 I kind of knock that on the head because um, time zones dictate that I've done pretty much all I can do. And I uh, go and walk the dogs with my wife. We have a great hour together walking the dogs at the race course. Um, I come back, I play cricket with my son or football. And as I think I said last time, my son is a, a total Aussie fanatic. Um, he was born in Australia. And uh, so he supports Australia or anyone playing England for that matter. So we have a, a monster ashes tournament at the moment. And I'm sad to say that Australia is killing England. And he's a good cricketer. Not like in the real world, obviously. But uh, we play cricket. I go to the gym afterwards. I am um, lucky enough to have a gym here in my house. I work out. And then afterwards, I settle in for the evening. And we have a family dinner. We, we play cards, the family. And we put a lot of quality family time. It's, it's very, very actually positive. And then go to bed at 10 o'clock and repeat. <laughs> I'm sure... I'm sure you're all in the same scenario. It's quite a strange existence. So there's this, uh, this groundhog day and this repetition. And here I am in my, my home office and it's never been so clean. Every shelf has been polished by myself and the books are all organized and the filing is all done and uh, quite frightening. But anyway, this is a new world and uh, I'm more and more convinced that it's necessary to have the, this discipline of, uh, of isolation in order to get this coronavirus virus under control. So anyway, I thought I'd give you a little tour of our operations, what we're doing um, and how we're seeing things. If we start in Australia, clearly Australia is in a similar lockdown. We are anticipating that for the next few months and probably the rest of this year, Australian consumers will be and members with primarily holiday in Australia. So we're anticipating that um, Rotnest will will um, be visited and Rotness will be um, a resort which will be popular. So we're spending some time on that and looking at how we can improve the facilities, looking at how we can upgrade it. Um, also the golf course there, which we, we operate, we're gonna be upgrading and the spa. Um, we're also looking at other tourism related activities that we can do in Australia and in West Australia. We're considering the idea of getting involved within the camper van business. Um, we think there may be a good demand for that for members and clients to take holidays within Australia in the next nine months. As many of you know, we have a, um, a piece of land down in the Margaret River. And so we're considering ways that we could develop that or we can make that accessible. So we're kind of looking at the fact that a lot of Australian consumers and clients will still want to take holidays. They'll still want to have leisure time but they may either be restricted by the government or by the availability of airfares and, and, and planes to be focusing primarily on Australia in the next nine months. And so we've got one eye on what we can do there to satisfy the demand and provide um, karma-based activities in Australia. Elsewhere, in Indonesia, um, Indonesia, again, I think will be domestic in the short term. We anticipate that the Indonesian market, of which we have many members, um, will want to return to Bali and will want to take holidays there. We're not sure in the short term if the Australian market will be there for the next six to nine months. We sincerely hope so. One of the problems we face, of course, is the uncertainty of government advisories and what have you. 
but we do anticipate the Indonesian market will be coming back there. So again, the resorts are already, we're spending time upgrading assets, we're spending time um, doing some refurb and some renovation to make sure that they are ready. And the same is true in, in, in Thailand and also in Vietnam, that whether the international market comes straight away or not, we think the local market will be there. And so we are pretty much available and open as soon as we can. We have structures in place and systems in place and we'll be responsive to the international tourism needs um, as, they, as they take place and shape. The staff in those places and particularly in Indonesia where we have a large number of staff, I mentioned in my last um, conversation with you that we are very conscious, we need to look after them. The Indonesian government has said they are gonna provide support for um, uh, employees uh, or managers that are not working. But I don't mean to be skeptical to that. We, we, we sincerely hope that is true, but we think that may take time. So we're actually going further than that. And we are gonna be providing financial support, um, food support for families where it's necessary, and indeed going beyond members of staff and food support for the local community to ensure that these, these fantastically loyal employees and these fantastically loyal um, karma people are not disadvantaged in the coming months. And so that is one of our priorities. We've tasked various people to drive that forward. So please be assured that the, that the, the frontline staff, to use the, the phrase that they're using for the NHS here in England, will be looked after and will be protected, whatever the government actually does. And that's true in India as well. In India, we're also anticipating that the, the domestic market will pick up first and that people will want to take holidays whether that be one month or two months or three months or four months, uh, your guess is as good as mine. But the resorts are there, they're ready, we're staffed, we are, we're preparing them for people when the time is right. And with the staff in India, we're also going to be looking at support packages to make sure that they are, they're okay. Um, we, we would hope that the government does provide support packages like they do possibly in Australia or like in England. But again, these are third world countries and so we want to make sure that we look after after our own to be candid and so that we've got those going in those places. Europe um, is similar I and mean, we're not really sure what's going to happen with tourism in Europe this summer. Uh, most governments are mute, most governments are still in a containment phase. Again the resorts are ready to go whether it be in Italy, whether it be in Greece, whether it be in, in Germany or, or France or um, in England but we really are in the lap of the gods and dependent on what the, the governments choose to do. Personally I believe there will be tourism. I do believe that it will be localized. I believe it will be um, primarily within either the same country or within a few countries around. And I personally don't believe that the, the level of international tourism that we've seen, and clearly we as a company thrive on with a club with 35 resorts in many countries, won't come back during this year and it'll be it'll be next year but you know i hope i'm wrong and we hope we'll see a rebound quicker but i think we're learning things every single day and every single week of what will happen and all we can do um i'm a great fan of the um, the man united coach alex ferguson um, who used to say that people spend too much time worrying about circumstances that they can't affect whereas really what you need to spend spend all your time worrying about circumstances that you can affect so i i can't really work out or know what's going to happen with governments or indeed the virus itself. So we're spending our time focusing on what we can do um, to be ready for when people want to holiday with us or ready for that we have opportunities to open our resorts and our restaurants and our bars and whatever. What we can do is, is try and help. Um, we, are, we are starting a scheme where we'll be providing accommodation in various parts of our um, operational area to frontline workers. Um, in England, they're called the NHS. I know in various other countries, they're called different names. But we, we, we believe that we can have a positive influence by giving free accommodation to people that are nurses or doctors or ancillary services helping at the front line. We're also looking at financial ways that we can help um, in order to, to really sort of give them a benefit and give them a, a message of support from all of us, the fantastic job that they're doing. And there's one observation I will give uh, from a personal point of view, and indeed from a company point of view, that it is a bit of an eye opener, I think, about the value of the health services. I think sometimes I've been guilty, and maybe we as people have been guilty of taking it for granted. And it, it's an utter revelation to realize that all of us are so vulnerable and are so dependent 
partly from physical health, partly from a company's uh, ability to trade, and partly for global economy. We are so dependent on the people there who look after us, who protect us, who, who stop things like viruses. And the reality is, to be totally candid, they're ludicrously underpaid. They are asked to work ridiculously long hours and they they still do it and i if there's one benefit i hope will come out of this is that governments and people and the social conscience will recognize that it is absolutely of paramount importance that we have a health service in all countries whether it be australia whether it be england america whether it be um, in the third world which works where the people that work within it are recognized as being extremely valuable are compensated accordingly and that we develop a comfort level that we can deal with problems like this in, in the future. Because I think we all probably agree and think that in, in one respect, we might have dodged a bit of a bullet because although this is hideous, it could have been a lot more hideous if it was a disease which was 10 times or 100 times worse. And uh, maybe it's meant as a bit of an eye opener, but we need to get our ducks in a row and make sure that we are prepared for worse situations in the future. Anyway, I'm sorry, rant's over. I'm, I'm, I'm neither a doctor, nor I'm a scientist, nor am I a politician, nor qualified to really speak about that. But uh, I think we all, when we're isolated, tend to think quite a lot and have quite firm opinions and views about the, <laughs> the way of the world. Much more importantly, I shall sign off with a joke. Um, I think the jury was split. I think most people say, don't try and get a job as a stand-up comedian. But maybe most people said, well, See if you can do one even worse than last time. So I have another joke for you. I apologize if it's even worse, but uh, a friend sold it the other day. There's a plane, it's flying over Europe somewhere, going off to a, a coronavirus conference to solve the problems of the world. And on the plane, uh, a few people. There's President Trump, President of the United States, of course. There's uh, President Modi, who is the, the ruler, the leader of um, India. There's Scott Morrison from Australia, there's Angela Merkel from Germany, and there's Greta Thunberg. And they are sitting on the plane to go to the conference. And yes, 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 you're right. Greta wouldn't be on the plane because she doesn't like planes, she'd be on a boat, but never let detail get in the way of a good story. So she's on the plane, it's an emergency, don't worry about it, but there she is. Anyway, so they're flying along and the pilot suddenly comes on the tannoy and says, both engines have gone, we're gonna crash, and we've only got four parachutes. So there's a silence. And suddenly um, Donald Trump jumps up and says, I'm the smartest man in the world. The world needs me. Grabs a parachute and jumps out of the door. Uh, about 30 seconds later, uh, President Modi says, I am the ruler of India. There's 1.2 billion people who rely on me. I must go and save the world. Grabs a parachute, jumps out of the door. About 10 seconds later, Scott Morrison stands up and says, I am the prime minister of Australia. Um, not really sure why that's that important, but I must go and save the world. Grabs a parachute, jumps out of the door. Angela Merkel stands up and says to, to Greta Thunberg, look, I've lived a long life, a, a, a really positive life. Um, you should take the parachute. You're, you're young, you're youth, you're the representative of your generation, you're conscious, um, you're gonna do great things in the world. I would like you to take the parachute. And uh, Greta says to, um, um, Angela Merkel, Mrs. Merkel, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. But we could both take a parachute. Let, let's both go. Because the smartest man in the world just jumped out of the plane with my school backpack. Anyway, tonight I will leave you with another glass of wine. It's a sherry tonight. I'm quite partial to sherry. I think sherry is a vastly underrated wine. This is a Palo Cortado, obviously from Jerez in the south of Spain. And uh, I wish you well. I hope that you're bearing up to what I'm sure are many problems. And um, I, I don't mean to belittle those problems. I don't mean to be flippant about them. I know there's many troubling things on everyone's shoulders out there. And I, I wish you well. I wish you good health. Enjoy, if you can, the quality time with your family. Um, try and see a positive out of this. For all of us, it's sometimes very difficult. And I'd be lying if I don't sometimes bang my head against the wall with uh, the situation that we're all in. But it is, and it is the way it is. I think as humans, we are incredibly resilient. I think as the Karma family, we are very alike, all of us, and um, we'll see good times soon. So I'll see you soon. I'll be back next week. I shall try and find an even worse joke. So until that time, cheers and look after yourself.